So here we're looking at an anterior view of a left leg. We can see the patellar ligament here at the superior aspect attaching into the tibial tuberosity. Here we've got the medial surface of the tibia, better known as the shin, which ends at, at the medial malleolus. So if we start there and move laterally, we're looking at then at the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg. And the first one we hit will be tibialis anterior. Now the tendon of that muscle attaches distally here at the tarsal, so not making it uh, to the, actually, sorry, makes it to the metatarsal head, but it's attaching to the tarsals and metatarsals here um, on the medial border of the foot, doesn't make it to the digits. Next to that, if we keep moving laterally, we have extensor digitorum longus on the superficial surface, on, you know, on the outer surface here. It starts out here as one tendon, which then splits into four. So we can see four tendons here going to digits two, three, four, and five. So that's extensor digitorum longus. Now, in between tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus, there is another muscle which has a tendon running down to the distal aspect of the big toe here, first digit, and that will be extensor hallucis longus. And if we just remove the extensor digitorum longus muscle belly here and turn it over, you can see the muscle belly of extensor hallucis longus here. And wouldn't that make a great exam question, just to put that on the bench and just put a pin in it? Yeah, that'd be cool. No, I, I probably won't do that. But on the specimens, what you will be able to do is just gently move extensor digitorum longus aside and find the tendon and muscle belly of extensor hallucis longus in that space. Now the fourth muscle that's in the anterior compartment, we can really only clearly identify the tendon. Uh, and the reason is, this is fibularis tertius. And tertius, uh, as in primary, secondary, tertiary, it's the third of the fibular muscles. We'll look at the other two in a sec. And its tendon attaches here at the base of the fifth metatarsal. So it's not going to one of the digits. doesn't make it to a toe but it does attach to the metatarsal base here. So if we're counting tendons, if we start with the extensor hallucis longus, we've got one, two, three, four, five, each one going to a digit, the sixth one attaching here to the metatarsal will be fibularis tertius. Occasionally someone doesn't have one, but I think all the specimens we have at the moment do. So you should be able to find that one pretty easily. Uh, now, the thing with the muscle belly, though, is this muscle belly, in theory, this part here, is fibularis tertius, and then the rest of this is extensor digitorum longus. But in practice, like with this model, there often isn't a very clear line here that, that separates the two. So you often can't tell. So it's pretty difficult to pin extensor digitorum longus or fibularis tertius unless you can see a really clear division here that separates the two. Often, if you gently pull on the tendon of fibularis tertius, it looks like all of these muscle fibers move. And then if you pull on digitorum longus, it looks like they all move too. Okay? So it can be quite tricky. So unless you're very sure, um, unless I'm very sure, I wouldn't be pinning those two muscles. But the tendons, very clear, very easy to tell which tendon it is because you can see where they're going. Okay, so that's the anterior compartment four muscles there. Then we have a lateral compartment and it's just next to the anterior compartment. We just have two muscles here, fibularis longus and brevis. Now longus uh, has its muscle belly more proximally and it does actually come all the way from the fibular head down and you can see the tendon more superficially here. So proximal to the lateral malleolus we can see the tendon fibularis longus and it's, it's lying over fibularis brevis, so it's superficial to it here. So this is longus muscle belly coming down here, and then these two bits here are fibularis brevis. So the muscle belly of fibularis brevis, you can see more of it anteriorly and less posteriorly, but it's either side of the tendon here of fibularis longus. Now when we come, 
when we get a bit more distal into the foot, once we're past the lateral malleolus, the, t the tendons of the two kind of separate. And this is longus, this is fibularis longus, and it disappears here and goes under the foot. So it goes along the plantar surface of the foot, the sole of the foot, and it ends up on the medial side. It goes right across the bottom of the foot. But on a specimen, you and this model, you'll just see it disappear here. Whereas the tendon of fibularis brevis actually attaches out here at the base of the fifth metatarsal, very close to where fibularis tertius attaches. So this is brevis, this is longus here just disappearing. So those are the two muscles of the lateral compartment. Now the good news is only one compartment to go. Uh, the bad news is there's seven muscles in the posterior compartment. So there's a few more to look at. Here we've got a superficial view uh, from a posterior aspect. We can see gastrocnemius pretty easily. Two heads, so that's gastrocnemius, attaching in to the calcaneal tendon. Now on the more distal part, <coughs> we'll notice that the muscle bellies tend to end about midway down the leg. So gastrocnemius is quite a proximal muscle in the leg. Soleus, the muscle that's deep to gastrocnemius, can be seen on both sides. So we can see it here on the lateral aspect, deep to gastroc. Notice that it, it comes uh, distally much further than gastrocnemius does, but it too does attach into the calcaneal tendon. We can also see it here on the medial aspect, deep to gastrocnemius, and then attaching into that calcaneal tendon. Now if we remove part of gastrocnemius, here's soleus here. Uh, a lot of it will be silvery uh, looking if you look at it under gastrocnemius there. And it's named because it looks like a fish called the sole, which it does actually look like it. I've seen a sole and I've seen the soleus muscle and it really actually does look a little bit like it. That there's very similar shape and colour. So that's the soleus there. Now this muscle, or this tendon here, is plantaris. So it's in between gastrocnemius and soleus. And this is the muscle belly of it here. So it looks like it's the most proximal part of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. But it is actually plantaris. And it has a long skinny tendon, which is on this model, is hidden under the calcaneal tendon. But it actually comes all the way down to attach to the medial aspect of the calcaneus here. And on a lot of the specimens, you can find this very fine tendon here. It's very skinny, um, just on the medial side of the calcaneal tendon. So it starts out lateral, but then it attaches distally on the medial side. So that's plantaris, small muscle. So we've got soleus, gastrocnemius, and plantaris there. They're the three more superficial muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. Now we've got four deeper ones to have a look at. Now the first one is proximal, so it's just sitting up here. This is popliteus. So we're looking here at the popliteal region, back of the knee. So popliteus is just here, the back of the leg um, at the superior end. So this is popliteus, nice and deep. On some of the knee joint specimens you will be able to see this muscle quite clearly. But of course if gastrocnemius and soleus are still in place, a difficult one to find. Now then there are three more distal muscles here in the leg, in the posterior compartment. In the middle of the three muscle bellies we have tibialis posterior. So when you're looking at the muscle bellies, tibialis posterior is in the middle. But they change position as they go distally unfortunately. So the muscle belly of tibialis posterior is in the middle but the tendon ends up being quite medial. Now then these two muscles here are the flexors of the toes. So one of them is going to be flexor hallucis longus, one of them flexor digitorum longus, but these ones actually cross over when they get to the foot, so it's not how you might think. If we look at the foot, we can see that the, the big toe is here on this side, so this tendon here will be flexor hallucis longus, but because they cross over, that means that it's this muscle belly here. So it's the more lateral muscle belly, but then the tendon becomes more medial. So this 
lateral muscle belly is flexor hallucis longus, which means this medial one is flexor digitorum longus. So digitorum longus crosses over, splits into four, and becomes four tendons that attach to digits two, three, four, and five. So, tib post in the middle, digitorum longus medially, hallucis longus laterally. Remember, they're both flexors. But, unfortunately, the fun doesn't end there because what we've got, if we look at it from a medial point of view, here we've got the medial malleolus. And if we come in a bit closer there, we can see that there's a tendon just posterior to the malleolus. So here's the malleolus. Here's a tendon just behind it. That one is actually tibialis posterior. So it's come out from under the other two and become the most medial. Remember, it was in the middle when we were looking at the top end, when we were looking at the muscle bellies, but now it's become the most medial. So we've got tibialis posterior, then flexor digitorum longus, sorry, and then flexor hallucis longus. And for that, we can use a saying to help, helpfully, uh, hopefully, <laughs> I'll just remember, we've got Tom, Dick and Harry. So there's a saying that goes every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, is doing this or has this. So what we've got is t Tom, T for tibialis, posterior, D, that's Dick, flexor digitorum longus, and then H, Harry, flexor hallucis longus. So Tom, Dick and Harry, that's the order they go in if you start at the medial malleolus and then move laterally. Now, in between Dick and Harry, we've got, an on this model, we've got an artery and a nerve. Now, on the specimens, there'll also be a couple of veins. And what that means is, later on, you'll learn the names of these structures. But for now, you can just go Tom, Dick and Harry. But later on, you'll be able to say Tom, Dick and very, very naughty Harry, which will remind you that there's an artery, two veins and a nerve in there. And that's important. Because on this model, this nerve looks very thin and yellow, but what will it look like on a specimen? I can tell you're all thinking it. It'll look very much like a tendon. And often, if one of these structures is pinned, um, people will tell me it's the nerve when it's a tendon or tell me it's a tendon when it's the nerve. So make sure you get it right. There'll be four structures here that look like tendons. And it'll go Tom, Dick, and then there'll be a nerve and then there'll be Harry, okay? And with the nerve, there'll be a couple of blood vessels. You can usually tell them apart from all the other ones pretty easily, but the nerve at first glance looks a lot like a tendon. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Okay, for now though, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Good stuff. Okay, so that's the muscles of the leg.